Hmm. This is a deep one. And um, the title of this one is Lies Our Spiritual Fathers Are Telling Us. Tell this generation of spiritual fathers to please stop lying to us. Um, the man that came up with this, he actually has this to posit. And I'm going to go through what he said. He started with some were burnt alive, and that has to do with the Matthias. Some were thrown inside boiling oil till they melted. Some were tied on a tree and were left for wild animals to devour them. And by tomorrow morning, it was only their skulls that were seen. Some were tied on camels and dragged around town till their bodies began to fall off in pieces. They had families. They had fiancés, husbands, and wives. They had aged parents that loved them so much. But they were in the merciless hands of the ethic. That was their offense because they left their homes and came to tell those idol worshippers that there is no power in the trees that they are worshipping. That Yeshua and Mashiach, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has died, but he is no more in the grave. That was their crime. And they were killed. But before they left for the mission's work, they knew they might not come back alive. They looked at their loved ones and told them to take heart. That in case they don't get to see them again, that they will definitely see each other in heaven. Others were crying while they were living, but they laughing, calling it an honor, having an opportunity to risk their life for the one that gave his life for them. Until today, decades after, nobody had seen them again, life or dead. Jesus, please forgive my generation. What did you do that to that generation that made them choose gruesome death in defense of your name instead of mansions and popular pulpits? How did you touch them that made them lose value for the things my generation is killing themselves for? Please, Jesus, touch us like that. Friends, tell this generation of spiritual fathers to stop lying to us. There is something they were told about Jesus that they are not telling us. That is why what we call evidence of our faithfulness to God today is how many members, how many automobiles, how many aircraft, how many private jets, how many domes you build we have and how many nations we have preached. That is why the greatest testimony of an average Christian sister is that God gave her a wonderful husband. Not that she was slapped in her working place for preaching Jesus Christ. Not even because she lost her job because of her stand with God. Is it not a shame that all the cars we celebrate is the same cars Bob Risky is dashing out to people? Why can't Satan play snooker with a generation that celebrates nothingness instead of value? And... I shamelessly and shamelessly uses things money can buy as parameter for the faithfulness of God. Tell our fathers to change their messages. Tell them that we don't need to have Jesus to have money. Tell them that marriage is not a testimony in the kingdom because Jesus said that even the Gentiles have these things. Porn stars and dreaded drug peddlers marry, get divorced, marry again, get divorced again and still marry again. I know some atheists that don't believe in God who are happily married and extremely rich. Who is telling my generation of sisters that you need to be in Christ to get married or you need to be in Christ to be rich? Who is telling us that you need to have Jesus to have money? That is the message they started preaching in the late 90s and brought us to where we are today. Friends, let me tell you, you will have money. You will be happily married. But that is not an evidence of God's faithfulness because God sends rain both to the good and to the evil. A man looked at me and said to me that if God was good to me, I would have been able to have many cars with few mansions in some cities of the world by now. I didn't blame him. I knew that he is one of the people that were lied to by this generation of lying fathers. I am not owing anybody explanation for Babylon calls success in life and ministry. I did not repent because anyone promised me good life. The man that brought me to Christ and trained me left America and went into a bush and has been there for the past 15 years. 
an American trained nurse somewhere in that religious and poor village begging people to accept Christ? His generation of preachers are calling him a foolish man, but when the chips will be down, eternity will reveal our values. If souls get into Christ because of me, if dead prayers lives jack back to life after hearing me, if weak hearts are stirred once again for God after talking to me, if sinners shake my hands and go back home and start having encounters that will drive them to the closest church to surrender to God, if HIV and cancer patients hear my voice and run away, if there is any young man that remembers Ike Iriaku somewhere and still gets encouraged in this journey, then I am successful. Now, that is the person that is sharing his opinion, Ike Oriaku. Then I am successful. Moses saw money, he saw fame, he saw miracles and power, but he knew that these things will not, will not qualify his name to be written in the book that is the book of life. And how much you have in your account, how many children you and your husband gave birth to, how many countries you have visited does not mean anything in eternity. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Joseph, David, Paul, Peter, etc., these men knew that God was compiling names and they lived their lives in readiness for that time. Trust me, when my friends are full with people that celebrate material things as evidence in ministry, they will encourage you to depend on the hands of flesh and you definitely miss God. Don't ever listen to a man that has started using only his financial growth as a sign that he is doing well in ministry, such as private jet, latest automobile, expensive helicopters, the biggest dome, highest members, the best designer suit. A lot of people who have been distracted in work, in this work, but they will not tell you. They will shout and scream about how many nations they have preached in and how many pulpits they've stood on. They are just covering realities with a few naira notes and dollars they have in their accounts. It is better to keep drinking that Gary and be waiting on God than to join them in search of evidence in ministry that will remove your date from that book that God is writing. Moses knew this from the beginning and that is, that is why he absconded from that palace and chose to suffer affliction with his brethren. Yet, a generation of lying fathers arose that began to tell us that if you don't have 100 members in your church after some time, it means that God is not with you. Where is that gospel? that they were told that made them resign from lucrative jobs and run into mission fields and were ready to never come out until they turn every shrine there into church and every native doctor into Sunday school teachers. Where is that gospel that they preached to that made, that made some of them close their big churches and run into fields where they are saving souls to the kingdom? Some of them sold their properties and sold them as seeds or known missionaries. Why are they now telling us that if we don't have properties that we are not doing well in ministry? And because of that, these young ministers are now in search of properties at the expense of the hand of God upon their lives. This generation has failed, sir. Why failed when we began to celebrate miracle jobs more than salvation of souls? We failed when we began to look down on missionaries who have lost all rural, lost all in rural areas and started celebrating on the preachers who have gained all in urban areas. But I refuse to fail further with this generation. That is why I have made my choice. And please leave me alone. If you must succeed in ministry, if you must pull crowd, if you must become a voice, there's nothing wrong with private jets. But if you are that type that must own private jets and build big cathedrals just to show to your mates that God is good to you, please leave us alone. We are not compatible and we cannot play along. Some of us have already failed. They have already concluded that we are lazy and idle, that we are good for nothing else. That is why we are into ministry. And yet we are still looking for something more to lose for the master. Please, sir, look for others who want us to use what they call evidence in ministry as a way to find their mate. Some of us have already lost everything and there's nothing left to lose. This generation might never celebrate us. Our names might never be mentioned among the high flyers in our time. You might not even see us on billboards with the strong and mighty, but our confidence is that we know that there is a book God is writing. There is a compilation of names going on right now in eternity. And we know that our little way, our names that we're never reckoned with in life here are recorded in the chronic schools of the good things of God. If Jesus tarries 500 years from now, a generation will rise to talk about us. They will tell their children how we mocked, we were mocked for waiting on God of Israel. They will talk about how we abandoned everything else in search of soul that must not go to hell. And the generation will thank God that we stood and staggered not. You can take your pulpit and honorarium away. Take your ministerial contacts away. Keep your seeds and offerings. Keep your tithe. I must not be known. 
it mu- I must not be known. If God says I should go inside and start praying for missionaries alone, that will still be a great fit for me. If you want to be talked about, go ahead. But I will make sure that I will partner with the Holy Ghost to make vanity and popular in my days. Once again, I have made my choice. And please leave it like that. Being in the good book of your papa does not mean anything to us. If we wanted to be loved by all, and by all means, by now, you should have known. What is driving us stronger than us? We don't want to die after we have died. We want our bones to be able to preach Jesus to the generation that will be here after we have all gone. Have you ever wondered what was in the minds of those men that were killed because they were preaching Jesus? Did they not have husbands and wives? Did they not have dreams and visions? Is it not a shame for our generation that what we call testimony is what some men left and accepted to be killed in defense of the holy child Jesus? Lord, is this generation that will halt the progression of satanic onslaught on our time? Please, from somewhere or even from nowhere, raise an army that will not be after what this generation is after. If our fathers doesn't want you to do something with them, please, in your wisdom, bypass them and do something for us without them. Whether money comes or doesn't come, whether marriage comes or not, whether visa or no visa, our generation will parade men and women that will still love, that will love not their lives or even unto death. Already, we have made our choice. This is um, according to the man that I just called his name, Oriaku, and that is what he has shared. And there are response to this. A lot of people came after him. They said, your folly is like that of many conservative churches who fanatically hold on to one scripture. But the Bible is complete and true believers embrace all its teachings. It is the source of holiness messages and also prosperity messages. Mr. Fanatical Fool, respect the pictures of those um, that you have put out there. And that's the pictures of the, um, the, the generals, as they are called, the um, Christian or spiritual generals, the Christian generals. And um, some also accepted what you have said. They said that the lives of our spiritual fathers, indeed, this generation of Christians are made to believe that there is a strong correlation between being in Christ and to be extremely um, rich. Well, I don't know what your own opinion is. Is this insightful? Is this educative? Is this something that has touched your soul? Or you have something to say as regards what he has posited? Drop that at the comment section below. And while you're at that, if you're not a member of this channel, let's grow it together by you tapping on the subscription button and the red notification icon bell below. It will alert you whenever videos are uploaded. Thanks. For <music>